so I'm then uh, I've been at Klaus Olsen since 2002, 14th of uh, November. So tomorrow I'll be there for 16 years. Uh, I started uh, when I was studying in the store part time. I don't really count that as work, but uh, <laughs> I, I've been doing like proper work at the office for the last eight years. Uh, first, I was the online manager for Finland, and then now the last uh, 15, 16 months, I've been running online operations at the central level uh, here in Sweden. So I actually travel every other week here from Finland. Then it's three hours by train to Incheon, where we are coming from. So I'm going to talk quickly about Klaus Olsson, uh, which is also weird. We are <laughs> all of the Swedes know Klaus Olsson, I assume. There's no one who hasn't been to a store. Otherwise, something would be really wrong. I don't know what kind of people we found for this. Uh, uh, we are usually referred to as the goob doggies here in Sweden, but if you look at the statistics, we're actually not that anymore. We have like at least 50% women who shop at us. Uh, and we are also 100 years old now, uh, this year. So I usually say we are like a 100-year-old startup because we are doing a lot of stuff and we are usually at the forefront of where we want to be. And sometimes we sort of slow down a bit and then we speed up again. And it's sort of interesting to see that like there's, for as much 10 years, I'm like, yeah, cool. And I'm like, yes, we're 100. <laughs> and I've talked to, like a few weeks ago, I talked with someone from a Finnish uh, uh, pharmacy and they were like, oh yeah, we're 385 years old now. I was like, okay. So there's usually someone who's always older and they're also doing a lot of digital stuff. Uh, for Klaus Olsson, Last year we changed the CEO and the management team and the strategy. So now we're talking about uh, 100 more years since we've made 100 already, which is quite an achievement. And that has sort of changed what we're doing and how we're doing it also. Uh, the traditional thing is uh, for 70 years we were like a mail order business. Then someone realized that you can open a store in Galerian here, so we did that. And now we have 250 stores and then we sort of drifted from the delivering stuff directly to customers, being close by at their home, and now we're going back to that more. So digital is in a heavy focus, which is cool, because for like years I was like, oh, we need to do more digital, and we didn't. And now we're actually doing it, and if you look at the numbers we're reporting, then it's looking really good. Obviously, it's easy to grow when you haven't been investing into digital and you start investing in digital. <laughs> But even compared to the market and compared to where we are thinking that we should be, then we are like pushing really far. Uh, the other thing that has changed is, uh, well, all of you have seen our print and the catalog, and that's sort of the world where we're coming from. It's a product or a lot of product, like 15,000 of them. But it's not that much uh, actual, uh, how should we say, it's not solutions. It's like, uh, here's a drill. We're not saying like, oh, this is how you put up the painting or why you should have put the painting. We are like, we've been really close to the actual stuff that we've been selling. And that's also changing, and that then requires a lot of changes in the back ends also. And comes into also how we show content and actually having content. Like, If I want to find a product picture, it's really easy. It takes me like two seconds. But if I want a picture of a product when it's being used, then it's suddenly, oh yeah, we don't have that. And so we've been starting working on that four or five years ago. Now we have a studio to make pictures and video. We have people who are actually writing text, and then we do collaborations with people. Like in Sweden, you have Club Class. I assume most of you are members. If not, then you should go sign up. And you should approve the GDPR stuff, because we really want your data. And it makes the content better for you also. Uh, now I don't remember the official numbers. I think we have like two million plus members. Uh, in the club, and that's probably than both countries combined. But I think most people in Sweden are in the club who are within the shopping group that have money that we want. So obviously we want more. So sign up your kids as soon as they're legal. I don't know how that works in Sweden. Uh, I'm drifting off. Uh, so that's sort of where we are coming from. Uh, this product focus has also been seen in how our systems are set up. You talked a lot about uh, legacy systems and having a lot of systems integrated and built, and then you build another one, and then you realize that they don't work together. That's sort of where we are coming from. We have uh, our main uh, ERP system just has been changed. Welcome back. It's okay. 
so we had one which was built in the 80s, which was like really cool. You had a text-based system where you could do stuff. It was really fast, but it only knew one storage facility, for example. So as soon as you were like, oh yeah, we're opening stuff in other countries, it was like, no, no, you're not. So now we have sorted that out, but then we have a lot of other systems. We just changed our PIM system, so the actual product information is now in a modern thing which can control where it goes and what it contains. And it actually supports video links now, which we, for example, didn't have support for. And all of that's in the back end. And it also comes uh, when we come to this then. Uh, for online, we are one of the first uh, Swedish online stores. I think in 94 we opened the first web shop, which was hand coded by someone at the then office where there were like 50 people or something. And he did that in his spare time basically and built like a web shop. So you could sort of order instead of sending in the paper that you would normally send in then. Since then, we had another version, which was actually from a company, which was like a major improvement. And then we were like, okay, what's the next step in 2012, 2011? And it became then Hybris. So the actual site that we have now is on a system that's been designed on the requirements from business from like eight years ago, which leads us sort of to how do we do that then now? Because it's eight years ago, it was products and it was buying the store. We will show you how much we have in the store because that's really important for you. And but if you want to, you could buy it online, but really go to the stores. Now it's like buy wherever you are, when you are. There were no, like the specifications I think were for iPhone 3 <laughs> when that one was built. So we have really challenges from the technical side with what size the pictures are. Uh, we have challenges in how the pages are built. They're really fast because there's like almost nothing cool happening on them which nowadays you're sitting with an uh, iPhone X and you're like, I'm scrolling the uh, history here, not like actual modern sites. When you then go to Amazon, for example, you're like, what's going on? Can they do this? Why don't we do that? So that's sort of where we have come from. Uh, obviously the solution for us was to find a tool to use for that, to do at least some stuff before we actually change out stuff. Yeah, changing the whole system and all of the connections was really hard. And we had at the same time the uh, ERP system, which we have now changed. That was like a five-year project running. And IT was like, no, we're not going to change two systems at the same time because there's codependencies and that's going to be a really, really, really big mess if you do. So we didn't do that. Instead, we were like, okay, what can we do with the actual site? So the basic is there. We have uh, information and we have a way of paying and we have the information of the products and the customers. So we started looking at tools and obviously Frosmo is one option. You could have done a lot of small tools for A-B testing. You could find someone for banners. You could find someone for pop-ups. You could find someone for email. You could find someone. But we were like, okay, what's a more smarter way of doing it? And Luckily, we found Frosmo, and you're from Finland, so I was like, yes! So I always buy Finnish if I can. Especially in Finland, we have this uh, really good technological background, I think, from Nokia days and others, that has created a lot of companies that are really in the forefront. There's some cool Swedish stuff too, but I'll talk about that next time, because I haven't anything prepared for that, and they didn't invite me here. So, uh, With Frosmo, then, uh, the first things we did were just like small tests. Uh, and just looking like, does it work? And once we realized that it works, then we started looking at, okay, how do we actually want to work with this? Uh, luckily, now we have the changed management team because we were doing sort of shadow wor ways of working where they were like, oh, these are the products we want to sell. And we were like, actually, we want to look at the whole thing and who are the customers, what do we want to show them? So now we're going from, I wanted to say data first, but really we're going from insight first because data doesn't say anything. You need someone who looks at it and actually comes up to something. Uh, the current list of things that we're doing, for example, is 150 items long. And there is like a lot of stuff that's, oh, this should be fixed, but the platform can't do it. But then there's also stuff like, oh, could we test this? Could we uh, experiment with this? Or do we just want to see if this is a really wild and crazy idea? What happens if we hide the pictures or make just the picture and price or something on a product page? So we have like a lot of stuff gathered there. And then for this, we have partly our data, and then obviously in Frosmo, you can see how the stuff that you're doing in Frosmo is working. And that we have again connected back into analytics so we can follow up also on those parts. 
we are sort of in the process of connecting that back into Facebook so we can start doing uh, way more stuff even with audiences in analytics into advertising and then it becomes a whole thing. But that's probably a bit too technical for some here. We can talk about that if you're into marketing. There's some really cool stuff you can do. Uh, that's sort of where we're coming from. Then we've also realized that we actually need UX people and designers and we need more of them because if you're running a lot of tests, you need to have someone who designs a lot of tests and who creates the materials for those also. You can do some stuff dynamically. Uh, not so much in Frosmo right now, but I think there is potential there. If you have pictures of product, you could build uh, dynamic pictures, for example, or dynamic videos. We're doing some of that stuff in uh, Facebook advertising right now. And I think that will also come into the pages long term. Uh, but uh, we actually hired a uh, user experience, uh, UX designers and uh, customer experience people. So now we have sort of the data part and then we have people who actually look at what we could do with it and then we have a tool where we can actually do stuff. I have no idea where I'm on time. I usually talk too much when I'm nervous, so that goes into that. Uh, so with that in place, we have started to take at these lists that we have and basically we have four parts there what they're doing. I already said we do some modifications and we test them. I'm not sure if I've written that right. Uh, then we do enhancements, which is basically looking at what the site can do and where we actually need something more and that isn't there. Then we also just test stuff all the time. And then uh, the fourth leg is sort of, uh, we can do content which we can't do ourselves with Frosmo. So we have actual sites, pay parts of the page which we just built through Frosmo. If you want to buy a robotic lawnmower, now it's not quite the season for that, but after Christmas, there's probably good prices if you have a garden. So for those, we have a cool thing where it will tell you which one you need from all of the models that we sell, for example. Actually, we have one for the vacuum at the home also, which is going live, I think, this week. So if you need one of those, you can test that out. So uh, I think they go down to like 299 euros. Uh, not sure what that's in Sweden. They do their own pricing. Uh, but those are, there is like, uh, those were harder. With the robotic uh, lawnmowers, it's sort of interesting because you have a lot of different uh, variables that control it. Like if you have a garden, how steep it is, how big it is, should it be smart? Cause some of them just drive around, some of them actually like follow like a plan that they build. So there is information to use. With the vacuum, it's sort of boring because they vacuum. <laughs> some of them are smart and some are just bounce around in the room but that's it so but that kind of information if you have you can like enrich our data with uh, uh, with uh, the capabilities of Frosmo to actually give customers more useful experience because if you see a picture they all look the same basically it's round or it has like a square side and then you look at 12 of them and you're like okay which one do I want so at that point the only thing you see is price and then you might buy the right one or not, but usually you go to the cheap one. But if we can tell you, actually, you need this because you have an amazing apartment, then you can buy the more expensive one and I can have a party. Uh, going on, I, I, I talk a lot, so I'd rather show you stuff that we have done because then you can see how it actually looks. Uh, if we look at Frosmo overall, 98% of the people who come to our sites see stuff from Frosmo. So that's quite a lot. There's the two percent I'm guessing are people who run some really hard ad blockers and ghost area and block everything. That's a script, and that's a shame. Then they get the basic class also on site from eight years ago, and that's the experience that they will have. But most of the people actually will get small stuff or big stuff. There is a lot that we're doing on all parts of the customer journey on the site. Overall, we can see that bounce goes down when we run stuff through Fosmo, so it's actually useful for the customer. When they come into the site, they're less likely to leave it directly, so you, there's something happening there. Uh, that's probably because we do a lot of stuff on the product page, and most of our traffic comes to the product page or the front page, and on both of those, we have Fosmo visible. Uh, and pages per session goes up also. I think the main thing for this I will show you soon is that we do a sticky bar through Frosmo, which has the search. So you actually find the stuff that you want if you didn't land it on the first in the first place. So then it's less likely that you leave. Uh, and also conversion goes up. Uh, conversion probably would be higher if we would just look at the parts that we build for the things that uh, relate to conversion. But we also do a lot of the content stuff. And obviously we get a lot of traffic on the content pages when we drive it there and then some of it is uh, there to do sales, some of it is there to show you what we have, some of it is there to tell you that now it's Christmas and then in two months you will be purchasing Christmas stuff. 
so for example, oh, it's a bit blurry. This part is uh, from Frosmo. We also have our own behind it. So if that crashes or for some reason you block the script, then you will see our own. It's dynamic. Uh, we run a bit different parts there. Usually it's uh, most uh, it's most viewed or most best-selling products. There we also have a few. We could run against uh, what's driving most euros or what's driving most amounts of purchases. Uh, and then obviously if we need to, uh, yeah, we're business people. If we need to sell something, we can also go in and put it there if we want to. But usually if you do that, then customers don't react to it because they don't usually want to buy what we want them to buy. They want to buy what they want to buy. Uh, then on the category page, this part, I don't have the stati statistics yet. So, uh, we're actually running, I think it's a multi arm bandit there. Right now. So there's four different uh, recommendation things that are set up and they're all dynamic. And then it's choosing which to show you whoever you are based on who you are. And it's optimizing. The data looks like this when you look at it, because there's like four different ones, and then there's comparison groups for the four. And uh, But once we get uh, enough data, then it's going to be interesting to see how much it improves. I think it's working really well from what I've looked at in the data, but there's no conclusions there. The other part is a little bit small. Uh, when you start scrolling down, our old search just stayed up above, so you wouldn't actually see what you have purchased, or the basket, or actual the search field. And when we put that f so that it follows you, the actual people who see it, then 13% increase in conversion just by doing that, which was like, whoo, and 40% session value. So they're actually buying and they're buying more because they actually search and then they usually find what they want to. And they stay obviously longer on the site because they're interested in what they find and they actually know how to get forward if they're stuck at the product, for example. And it's like, oh, this isn't what I want. Uh, and we are also improving on that. I think that's like version two. There's version three already coming. So we are also testing how it should be. And the first one was like a half hour hack on how it would look. And then our designer came like, what? he was very disappointed. This one was from him. So it's already more clean. Uh, then we do, as I said, content stuff. We do campaign pages. Uh, the basic one, which uh, hybrid supports, would be a picture and then products. Uh, but the products just show up as like a wall of products, and that doesn't say much. So we actually use Frosmo to recommend products based on this. Uh, we also have, a, I'll come to that later, but we have a thing coming which gives you like a shop to look inside the picture. So based on what the campaign is, you can actually click there. And I hope I have that. I should do that here. Uh, on the product page, this is the only Finnish product that I took. I tried to find everything in Sweden, but we're running this in Finland right now, so it's impossible to show you that in Swedish. Uh, if you go normally, we will have a small button and then two other buttons below. So we've been doing a lot of testing also on what kind of buttons we use and how many buttons we use. Normally, you have compare, add to your wish list, and then the buy. Uh, as soon as we run just the buy button, obviously, <laughs> buying went up. Uh, there are some benefits in doing the shopping and comparing also. So that's, I guess, the next step would be to find out where we can put an AI to define when it thinks that you should be comparing stuff because it's expensive and when you're like, just, I need this, and then you just show the big button. Also, we saw that depending on how big the button is, then it works better when it's bigger, which is self-evident, but the actual one in hybrid is hard-coded, so it's small. And that works really well. We also tested colors on that. I don't have the numbers for that because it was like last year and I didn't have time to dig it. But whatever is live is usually the one that's working the best uh, if you want to know numbers and you don't know the numbers. Uh, we also do uh, on products, we have seven different uh, ways of showing add-ons. So we have actual add-ons. You buy something, uh, oh, let's take the robotic lawnmower. You need to define the area where it works. So that's an add-on, like the cable that you put. And then there's a tool to do that. Then you can buy like a cottage, so your robotic lawnmower can sleep in it when it's not driving around, so it doesn't get wet when it's raining. So you can buy that. That's an add-on. Then we have actual like blades for it. That would be like a more of an accessory. Then we have others people have bought this stuff when you bought this. So you might actually find that people buy garden furniture while they're buying that because they're like setting up the best garden ever. So for all of these, we have different lists and we can uh, run them also through Frosmo and then it optimizes what it's showing. And it can also enrich it with, because uh, we have basic PIM functionalities that they set up. Oh yeah, this needs a battery click, that's the add-on. But then we can tell Frosmo, okay, look at 100,000 purchases of what's actually being bought together, and then we can use that data there. I don't have numbers for that now, but it works. <laughs> uh, 
then we do, I don't know what we're on time, but I think we have a few more minutes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, then we do add-ons, upsells, and recommendations. So we have that information. Normally you see those on the product page if you scroll down, but obviously once you have put the purchase, first purchase, we want to give you more. So we actually lift them. Uh, this is one variant. Another one would be when the cart drops, then we can show it under that also. But this worked way better. And in this one, we've also tested with three and with two, and there is actually a, another version coming, which I'll show you. But oh, this already, average order value goes up 8%. So again, we're making more money. And the rose butter seed goes up by 27%. So roughly one in four people will actually press something that we show them. Obviously here, good data is key, and relevant data is key. And the basic stuff we can do, but then if we have more stuff and then you need someone like an AI or at least some kind of algorithm that chooses what you're showing. And there I'm sure we can do a lot more also if we had more time. Uh, final thing, uh, for that one we have also a new design which is coming which looks better, but that's in testing right now so I don't have any numbers on whether or not it will work, but I'm hoping it will. It's a bit cleaner and it's going towards a more uh, flat modern look also. We're also doing a lot of other stuff in the back end and the side, but that's for another meeting, I guess. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>